Uh, but we have Robert, pronouns are he, him, in Idaho, uh, who wants to make a point about uh, arguing that God exists. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for taking my call. And I just want to say I admire you. I admire your pursuit for truth. I tune into your show regularly, and I just admire what you guys do. Um, before I can even say anything, I've got to get your permission to speak on in the realm of possibilities or what ifs. I mean, I, I personally believe God can't be proven in any physical way. There is, there is no basis for it. You have to just accept it by faith. So, uh, saying that I, I would like to say what I have to say, but I, 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 don't, I, I don't know to. what you, all right. So I can't, we've only got a, a couple of minutes left on the show. And if you're calling in, and your position is there's no way to demonstrate the truth that a God exists, uh, and and yet you believe in a God anyway, then why would I want to hear what you have to say? Well, this is the reason, because every God from every religion I've ever looked at, I would not want to embrace. But my own personal beliefs, what I've come to understand as what God is, I would want to embrace, and and that's really the yeah, whole. Yeah, but I don't care. You might as well be telling me how much you've invented your own God, and He's really warm and squishy. But you can't prove Him any more than you can prove anything else, which makes makes it a waste of time. So absolutely, to say here's something that I believe to be the case, but there's no way for anybody to demonstrate it is not only a waste of time; it's an admission that you are being irrational, and you're okay with it. I'm not. Well, I guess the only basis I have in my, I understand, Matt, that's a really good point. But the only basis I have in my own personal life is, is my actions, my deeds, my thoughts, the things that have changed in me personally over the years because of this belief. Um, so, so, I don't know. So really, first of all, you don't, you, uh, you, you, you have no way of demonstrating that changes took place because of a belief. But even if they did take place because of a belief, that doesn't mean that they took place because a belief is true. This is the tap Absolutely. dance that You're people right. do when they, when instead of facing the facts of saying, you know what, I can't, I, I, there's no reasonable path for me to believe in a God. So I'm just going to get on with my life. It's about being so afraid of saying, I don't believe there's a God that you have to invent one of your own and simultaneously point out that you cannot and do not have a rational justification for it, but you're going to stick with it anyway. I cannot in good conscience as a as a humanist and as a skeptic advocate for people knowingly claiming that they believe something which they know to be irrational I, my position is that nobody actually believes something that they know to be irrational that they don't have a good reason for which means they're instead lying they're claiming a belief because it's comfortable or comforting how could you possibly well, believe something response. and also say there's no rational justification for believing this but i believe it anyway I guess my response to that would be if you take out hope and you take out faith. Who took out hope without those things? So first of all, so no, no, no. So first of all, I didn't take out hope. I will take out faith because faith is the excuse people give for believing something when they don't have a good reason. If you ask someone, why do you believe something? Mm -hmm. And they have a good reason, they give a good reason. And if they don't have one, they, they give faith. Faith is not a virtue. Faith needs to be destroyed. But I didn't take away hope. I have a lot of hope. I have lots of hope that I will be able to destroy faith in most people. <laughs> yeah. How about how about hope for an afterlife? Hey, Robert. Okay. Hey, hey. How about hope for a billion dollar winning lottery ticket tomorrow? Is that wise? <laughs> That's a pretty good argument. Um, it, it might not be wise, but I mean, hope for an afterlife seems like something everybody would hey, want Robert, to embrace. No, actually, I'm not hoping for an afterlife. I'm hoping to live just exactly as long as I can and as long as I want to. Um, but if you sit around in this life focused on an afterlife that you have no good reason to believe that exists, haven't you just wasted every single second you spent on that goal? I don't know, man. I just don't feel that way. You you, you don't feel so. For an afterlife is is a powerful thing for people who have suffered. 
Oh, yes. It, it, it is a powerful thing that allows you to delude yourself with false wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. That's actually that's only true for you in your context uh, because of your culture. There are people around the world who, um, you know, grow up and live in different cultures that have a completely different perspective on that. To them, uh, life is suffering. They acknowledge that life is suffering. And the ultimate good is actually to let go of it and to uh, attain... Yeah. annihilation you know to be relieved re released from this cycle of uh suffering it's only in your context that you think um an afterlife is actually something very good to hope for but the fact is you don't have hope of an afterlife you have an open acknowledged self-delusion that gives you false hope of an afterlife well, I mean, I can't, I can't argue with that because as I stated, I, I don't have any proof for God and I don't know if any exists, but I just, I believe that anybody who, who could hope for or could, who could embrace the idea that an afterlife was going to be a peaceful, wonderful thing, that they would look forward to that and not, you know, not just. No, hope. no. Some of us give a fuck about what's actually real and true and not about what fantasy we wish were true. Some you know what of us I are engaged for? in reality and would rather not sit around going, gosh, it'd be really nice if I was a billionaire. Gosh, it'd be really nice if there was an afterlife. We have real problems to fix in this life. And, and you're propping up concepts that foster religions that are working in direct opposition to fixing the problems in the one and only life we know we're going to get. So no. You know what? I, 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 have, I have hope for um, I have hope for floating through the universe through space, while I am conscious. You know, just floating around and all that. I think I think that would be very peaceful. Uh, oh, and beautiful. That there is no reason for me to believe that that's going to happen, though. And there's also no reason for me to believe that there will be an afterlife because I'll, I'll just I'll be I'll be dead. I'll die, and I don't want to think more of myself than that. I will live and I will die, and the world will go on without me. Boo hoo! I mean, that's that's what that's all there is to it. Can I ask one more question then? So sure. all the injustice in this world, all the suffering, there is no balancing of the scale. There's there's not going to be no balancing there it's just like no if you want a better world how dare you how dare you robert if you want a better world if you want justice it's up to it's up to us it's up to us to enact justice in this world how, how, if we pawn it off on some kind of fucking karmic bullshit, there is no, there's not a proposed, like the Christian afterlife isn't justice. It doesn't mean that the good people get good rewards and the bad people get bad rewards. That's not what Christianity's afterlife is. There's very few afterlifes that actually take that sort of thing into consideration. But it, as far as we know, if you want justice, you need to work on it now, not hope that it happens in an afterlife. It is the pinnacle of procrastination and laziness and arrogance to hope for an afterlife that will fix the shit you're not fixing now. Right. I actually appreciate that. But just, just for the record, I don't believe in an afterlife where people get separated, hell, heaven, all that. I stuff. don't care. I don't care what you believe in because you have no way to demonstrate that any of it's true. You might as well be calling in to tell me that, you know, I don't believe that fairies created the universe. Nobody asked. You know what's I very, care about what people can demonstrate true. You know, you know what's very funny? Um, many people told me before when I when I say I'm an atheist, people say, so do you believe that all the, uh, the, the injustice in the world will just go unpunished? Or do you think that all the uh, all the good things that people have done will just go unnoticed and, you know, stay like that. Yeah. I mean, what, what exactly am I expecting? People often give the example of Hitler, for example, they say, oh, do you think Hitler who killed, who is responsible for the killing of, I don't know, uh, you know millions of people will just uh, go unpunished? Well, yeah, I'm sorry, but why exactly is it the rational thing to uh, expect that he will, of course, be punished in an afterlife? What exactly do I get from that? What exactly does anyone get from that? He existed. He was a terrible human being. He did horrible things to people. He caused a lot of suffering, and then he died. If he now goes to a place where he's uh, punished and tortured for all that, what exactly does that do? Does that make things better? Does that give me peace? Does that, will that make me happier? Will that put things in order again? It won't. It won't do anything. It's a very, uh, sorry to say, childish idea, in my opinion. There simply is no reason to yeah, assume that there is some justice after death. 
Somebody in chat reminded me right, that I, uh, I, I frequently ask, what do you believe and why? And that's true. But if the answer for why is I can't demonstrate the truth of it to anybody, I no longer give a fuck. Mm -hmm. But I think okay. apostate prophet's point is great because let, let, let's assume that, you know, the people who did wrong get punished in some afterlife. That does nothing for any of us right now. It's the same thing with notions about God forgiving somebody. And and it this is nothing new. I think you know, one of the founding fathers said something along the lines, if, if, um, if Jones owes me five dollars and god forgives him that doesn't help me at all you know I, and the the party that's been wrong gets nothing out of god's forgiveness and the party that's been wrong gets nothing out of a god's punishment there the notion of a of an afterlife that can bring justice is a lie even if there is an afterlife it doesn't bring justice well matt since you made that point can i just make one point on a possibility do you mind nope uh, we're going to, we got one more call. I, I think we really have no time. Past time, but you can call back next week and make a point on the possibility. But Thank thanks. you, Robert.